So today I actually wanted to talk about um, a kind of essential tools for building metal earth models, you know, such as this one here. Um, but I did want to talk about maybe what I would recommend as essential tools versus uh, it's good to have, but you don't technically need it. But if you do, you, you know, you'll have a more complete model. So uh, starting off, you know, you don't really need much to start doing a metal earth model. The only thing I would really recommend is a wire snipper here that you're going to see and any type of plier. But what you would want is a flat edge plier that you're going to see here or the one I would actually recommend if you only want to have one or two tools is, um, excuse me, this tool here. It's a little bit more narrow edge here, but it has a flat surface. I actually got this at Joann's. Um, but this is small enough that you can actually reach into a lot of places. So these are actually the only tools you would really need. Uh, in this, uh, it, it, these are the only two that are necessary tools to be able to work on a metal earth model. Now from here, the other uh, tools that I would highly recommend, um, of course, is X-Acto knife. And you'll be using this a lot to sometimes get in between tabs to open it back up if you made a mistake or closing it in. Sometimes I like using the back end of the X-Acto knife here to kind of wrap things around it, especially if you have a small sliver. Um, but it's not really essential, but it does help undo a few mistakes. Um, the next one that I would actually highly recommend, but it's not necessary, is a, a needle nose plier. So a long needle nose plier. And a lot of these are, they're long, uh, about probably two inches. But then they also have one that are uh, a little bit longer, I believe, but these have a flat edge here. You don't ever want to use a serrated edge plier like this one here, because this will scrape off the uh, the paint that's on the metal earth or it will scratch the surface of the metal earth as you're um, working on it. So do not get serrated edge uh, pliers. Now this is really great, um, especially when you have a flat edge that you need to bend at 90 degrees, you can kind of grab it all at once and just bend it. So this is a great tool. Um, another highly, highly recommended that I think you should be putting it on to pretty much your essentials kit would be, a round tip plier. So I have two different ones. Uh, they're about the same, but this one's a little bit narrower at the edge here, but I've been using this one mostly. This one helps a lot when you're working with a lot of curvatures, a lot of uh, round shape or, you know, curved shape parts because you're able to curve pieces around without really creasing it. Because if you're using this, you're always going to create like a, a hard edge somehow. So using this actually helps a lot when you're build, bending or rotating things around. So this is a very good recommendation if you do a lot of uh, metal earth models that have rounded edges or shapes. Now, um, speaking of rounded edges, so these are, I would say, my essentials. Um, another one that I would consider essential uh, personally would be this here. This is a micro plier. And as you can see here, it has a very, very small tip. So compared to this one here, the end might be about the same, but it's definitely less, uh, it's about the same uh, kind of angle here. But the biggest difference comes from here. You can see this is actually pretty wide here versus this is thin. So this has been a lifesaver for me. Um, in the sense that I pretty much use this a lot to do a lot of the fine detail stuff on Metal Earth and I pretty much use this on uh, a lot of the models over this plier. So if I had to say if you had to choose between one or the two, I would use this one. It's just that sometimes I like using this one just because there's more surface area here that it's sometimes easier to crimp or grab onto some of the tabs using this tool here. Because uh, you're working with the edge here. If you have a really small, you know, thin piece here, you have to be exactly aligned to be able to grab it. While with the, the thicker plier, you're able to kind of have a little more tolerance about where you can grab. So it's easier to grab things. Um, those are the two differences. But I would say this will be a more essential than this one if you had to choose. If you have both, that's actually even better. Now, these are... Um, just secondary tools that will help you get a more complete model. And there's actually quite a bit. So this is the part where um, this will kind of help you do a lot more of the complicated models. So the first one that I would recommend is actually 
I actually bought this through Amazon, but you're, you can find different uh, tools and these are great. Um, so what these are, are just pretty much rods, different rods of different uh, diameters here. And so this is great for when you have to create a cylindrical shape. So you can kind of just wrap it around, or if you want to work certain parts out, you can actually use these uh, rods here. So these are great for a lot of the cylindrical models that you've seen on my videos too. So this is a really great tool, especially when you start working with the human models, like the Bubba Fett model, Darth Vader, Deathpool, you're going to be using these tools quite a bit. Now, that being said, sometimes instead of using this, I would just refer to this one here. So there's two different uh, circumferences or diameters on this, but with this plier, it's actually nice because I can actually rotate around as I'm working it and crimping at the same time. So I can get like a tighter squeeze by using this tool. And a lot of times, most of the models I found out, these two work perfectly. Um, usually it's a perfect fit or it might be a little bit smaller, which is fine. Um, as you saw in some of my other tip video is that because it's smaller is actually nice because once it overlaps the circle then you can kind of unbend it a little bit and you get your perfect circular shape so this is a really great tool to use now sticking with the uh, the circle shapes one thing that i actually do like using a lot because sometimes this is kind of annoying to use because you have to find the right diameter is the step uh, ring tool here. So what this is is just a rod with different steps of different diameters and so Sometimes with the the cylindrical shapes. I like starting with a bigger uh, Circumference or diameter and start stepping down as I'm pressing down on it to get a tighter squeeze And so this kind of handles a lot of the smaller pieces These don't work great for long cylindrical shapes that you need So this is kind of that's kind of where you need these tools but if you have a little strip that you need to make into a ring, um, these are great because it's really quick and dirty and you don't have to worry about the, the ring size as much. Uh, you just kind of just work it around and just push it until you meet the circumference that you need. Now, another tool that I actually sometimes use, um, actually quite a bit for the Metal Earth Deadpool or, or those uh, anything that has human body shape is um, this is a crimping tool, but as you can see, it's a half circle shape. So if you're working on like Deadpool or, uh, or let's say Bubba Fett, the side body is actually curved like this. And so by using this and crimping down, I can actually get the shape that I need right away. And then, um, I can actually, um, kind of widen it out if I need to, to make it a little bit wider. But um, this actually helps a lot because these are not that great for that too. You can try using a dapping tool with different uh, different diameters, but this is great because I can just go crimp, 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 and I'm done. Um, and there's a slightly different tool too. It's kind of the same thing, but this one is um, smaller diameter. And this one, the reason why I like this one is a lot of these other pliers, you can see that it starts off and the way it crimps is that it starts on one side and then it finishes on the other. The reason why this tool here is looks this way is because when you press down, it kind of comes down at the same time. So you're kind of crimping down all together. Um, so these are really great for kind of uh, smaller shapes that I use a lot. The only downside to this is that because it's steel on both sides, if you're not careful about how you crimp this and you're not used to this tool, you will scratch the surface of the Metal Earth tool. But this is actually a really great tool to have. So these are my tools that I would use for um, any curvature or cylindrical shapes. But moving on to, uh, actually before I move on to the next one, I do have, uh, this is more of a tertiary tool set, I can say. It's, this is called a dapping block here. So I'm gonna zoom out real quick here. Okay, there we go. And so what it is, is that it's kind of like a combination of this tool. So if you have this, you probably don't need this, except this cylindrical shape has very, very thin uh, diameters here that these can't handle. 
But here, this is kind of a best of three worlds. So you have your rod, your cylindrical shape here that you can use to make curvatures. You have a different spearhead here that you can use to start curving by wrapping the metal pieces around and kind of pushing up against it. Or if you have like a padded newspaper, you can use it to kind of push down to kind of roll up the metal as you're working it. So you're actually um, kind of warping the metal to curve, but you're kind of controlling how it curves. Um, the third part that's actually nice is when you have to use curvature shapes. So this actually helped a lot for me when I'm working on the helmets of some of those uh, human models or when I was working on the R2-D2 model. Um, you have all these different kind of uh, diameter half spears here. So, uh, um, so what you can do then is kind of push it in and work your metal out to get that kind of nice even dome shape. Um, I know I, I've seen people use a tip where you get the, the R2-D2 head and you kind of curve it around using this. But what it, when you do that, it's great to start off with, but the edges where the, the R2-D2 um, curvatures meet, it's going to be flat. And so after you finish that off um, and you create your dome, putting it in here and kind of working around the edges this way will give you a nice equal dome all around. So this is actually a great tool to have. Um, but this is definitely optional, especially because to get a proper dapping block costs about anywhere between $60 to $100. So um, this is an investment. Um, so I would definitely say this is definitely an optional uh, one that I might not recommend as much if you don't do a lot of, of uh, sheet metal models or modeling in general. But this will help save some time and actually get a more pristine model at the end. Now, moving on, I would like to actually bring up um, these tools here. And what these tools are is for the cone shapes or actually anything that's a conal shape. I want to use these tools for making an actual cone, but you're going to sometimes get these kind of strips that needs to taper in as it curves around. So it becomes like a cone that's been chopped off on top. Um, these tools I actually bought through um, Animate Orange. And so he actually uh, prints these out himself, these 3D printing tools. Um, so he made these tools here with all these different kind of points and uh, circumferences um, for the cone shape. So a lot of times if you have a little strip, you know, for just imagine that this is your strip, you can actually just work it around to where you need it to be. And so you have all these different options here for kind of the taper that you need and the circumference that you would need. And so those are great for um, that type of work. It's not great for creating cones, but it's actually great for finishing off cones. So after you kind of warp the cones and make it in, a lot of times the edge, the bottom edge of the cone is not going to be straight. So this is kind of where I would put it, it, the cone in like this and then kind of work it around till I got all the edges to be rounded. So this is nice for finishing off cones, but not starting off cones. And the only other um, tool I would say is not really a tool as much as a lifesaver a lot of times is that when you're working with metal earth models, uh, at some point you're going to break something. Um, sometimes it just has to do with the way that it was designed so it doesn't handle a lot of stress. Um, but I would probably recommend just getting one of these instead of buying individual tweezers that cost like seven or eight dollars on Amazon. Usually for like 10 to 12 bucks, you can get a whole set of tweezers. And um, if you do a lot of other type of model making work, it, you know, these are great because it's not just meant for metal earth models. Um, the downside to this is you would I would not recommend this for bending the metal uh, shapes. This is more for picking or kind of, you know, grab, making a grasp of, because a lot of times what happens is it's too thin in the here at the edge here that when you're trying to use it to even bend the tab, this will warp out like this. Like it's not sturdy enough for you to actually grasp and bend the metal piece or a uh, model. If anything, this will bend 
Um, so the tweezers are not actually meant for bending unless you start going with these thicker pieces. And at that point, it's actually better to just use a needle, uh, a, a micro plier or like a needle nose plier. So those are all the tools that I use for just metal earth uh, models. I know that was quite a bit and I don't recommend buying all of them if you don't need to. But I would say instead of trying to buy all at once, um, start investing little by little, you know, starting off with maybe these four and then adding on as you need it. Cause I know I started off with metal earth uh, doing a lot of the more rectangular models. And then it's not till I started doing a lot more uh, rounded models that I started investing in different tools. So, you know, this is something that you should be building over time. And I wouldn't try recommending buying all these tools. Get comfortable with a tool. And when you think you've kind of mastered or got really comfortable with a tool, maybe purchase a new one or a, new, or a different type of tool and start building up your collections. Uh, this took me about, I don't know, six months to kind of uh, get all these tools and um, you know I'm pretty sure I'm not done and probably be buying more tools here and there but for the, the near future I don't see myself being able to, or needing any other tools for now so um, I hope this video was very informative if you're thinking about doing your metal earth models um, you know and kind of wondering what tools I was using to kind of get these shapes well I just kind of showed you all my tools um, that I do specifically for metal earth models. Um, I can try creating a video next time about the different tools I use for maybe the paper models or the plastic models or which are usually some of these tools or maybe a combination of them. But um, I will kind of uh, try to do more of these tips and tricks. I wanted to show a little bit of tricks and tips for the metal earth buildings and it kind of showed different conditions these were all actually extra pieces from the hogwarts castle model and i kind of want to go over a few different tips for when you're working on these models uh, from what i've learned and some of the difficulties of these parts so i think i'll start off with kind of the uh more simpler one and here, a, a lot of times, so what they're asking us to do is bending it up 90 degrees and then over 90 degrees. Um, but if you look, it's actually very thin strip in the middle. So what happens is, I'm going to actually show on this side first what happens. Is that if you try to bend this piece here, you're going to see that this part's actually kind of warps a little bit. So you're going to have to press it down like this. Now the tricky part is this here where you're trying to bend this part back 90 degrees. And if you're not careful, what ends up happening is, um, you're, let me show you re real quick, is that you're gonna actually end up unbending this or not getting a nice 90 degree angle. So uh, a little tip for this part that I would kind of give if you wanna make it look very nice and clean is actually grabbing, um, this part here, right, the part that you want to make it stable and then kind of using your fingers and pressing down 90 degrees this way, like that. And then you go again, holding the next part here like this and then bending up this piece here. And I might need to use this ruler to kind of be able to push it up a little bit as I'm doing this. So. You can see by doing that, this piece here now stays flat. And then I'm just gonna go in here and just kind of straighten out like that. So um, I know it's kind of hard to um, show and it's because these are really small parts, but by holding down and crimping down on the piece uh, and bending up around it like this, what happens is that this part won't get warped anymore. And so you kind of get a very nice clean 90 degree turn here like this. Now, the other tip I would like to give is these strips here. Um, you're going to see a lot of these models where the strip, um, you're, they want you to make it into a U shape and there's a, thin, a very thin strip here down the middle. And a lot of times if you're bending it, the first bend you can probably do, but then it's actually hard to get the next bend down because even with this thin plier, it's actually thicker 
than the middle part. So you're actually going to unbend this part here. So it's kind of hard to do without warping a lot of the metal pieces here. So my little tip here is actually using a metal ruler. Or if you don't have a metal ruler, you can kind of use the backside of the X-Acto knife. But the X-Acto knife is actually thinner. So um, the thickness of the metal ruler actually works the best. So my little tip here, and especially with the Hogwarts model, you're going to be doing a lot of these strips. And I mean a lot. So the tip here is actually using the metal edge, place the strip on the middle like this, lining up with the metal ruler, and using your fingers and pinching down on both sides. And what that does is actually, um, it kind of, the middle part stays flat and it, it actually wraps around the metal ruler so you kind of get your nice straight edge. Right here and if you want to make it even more uniform you can go back with a plier and just kind of uh, press down as you go along just to make sure that they've all been kind of crimped down to the same spot so that it looks more uniform so if I take this part out you see that I've done, done this piece a lot more quickly now um, so this is a really great way to do a lot of these strips and you're gonna be doing this a lot um, I believe on the Bubba Fett model, the gun that he's holding, you have to do this a lot. I believe for uh, Deadpool's uh, sword, I believe you had to do a part like this. So this is a really, really great tip and trick to kind of do these uh, U-shaped strips really easily. Next thing I wanted to talk about was a uh, cylindrical shape. So this castle here is actually going to be a cylinder shape and um, we're we're actually gonna make these two edges meet around a circle. Now, um, judging by the the length, the width of this, it's probably gonna be this tool here, but uh, just for demonstration's sake, I'm actually gonna show, cause you're gonna have different cylinders. So I like having these tools here and you don't have to use this tool. You can actually, if you have different like r straight cylinder shapes, maybe like an X-Acto knife, you know, can be a rod, but anything that's like a nice rod shape. Um, in this case, I'm going to try using this one here. This one actually might be too small, but I actually like going one or two sizes smaller than the required cylindrical shape, just because uh, you're never really going to get the edges to bend nicely. Um, it's going to be a little bit f uh, straight. So by going with a, sm a slightly smaller cylindrical shape, um, and you're pressing up against the edges, it's going to be a little bit more rounded that, that like, if you can see, it's not going to go all the way to the edge. So when I undo this, this cylinder is actually going to be a little bit bigger than the actual shape that I'm, the rod that I'm using. So this is a really nice tr uh, trick here. So as you can see, I kind of done this here where, um, you know, it's overlapping a little bit, which is fine. I actually want that overlap because as you can see at least the edges here now are more rounded and then I'm actually gonna kind of open up a little bit and then you kind of get your nice cylindrical shape here uh, you can go back in after you've uh, spread it out a little bit and then go over and kind of round out the edges and kind of even it out by just rolling it across like this because then you get a nice uh, cylinder shape here uh, there are going to be two different messes I'm going to show you. Actually, they're very similar messes, but the way you do it will be slightly different. You're going to get sometimes two different types of cones. One that's going to be very straight. Uh, sorry, not straight, but very small. And then one that's bigger. But then a lot of times, the smaller ones, you might get these pre-scores here. So they're actually going to be a little bit more uh, straighter. So it's going to have more of an edge. Well, these are going to be more of a perfect curve. So the way I like working on these is I usually try to see where it's connected to. So this is going to be my stable side here. So I'm, I'm actually going to go on both sides and just try to follow the angle here uh, of the line that it's given. Um, a lot of times you're going to see the smaller shape. Sometimes the bigger cones will have this too. So I actually try to bend away from the, the stable side here, the one that's connected. But instead of going one by one from here, I would actually start with the edges here and try to get close as possible and straight as possible. Now the biggest problem with these cones is that you can kind of get this part to be nice, but the top is always gonna have a little bit of an opening and it's gonna look like it's warped and uh, it just doesn't look that pretty. So 
uh, from here, I'm actually going to start crimping down and I'm actually going to use a round tip plier just so that I scratch the surface a little less. And as you can see, I'm actually pushing, but what I'm trying to do is if I see that I have to bend this part, I don't just try bending it by curving it because that's just going to make this part bigger. What I'm actually using is, I, I, and this takes a little bit of practice, you kind of read where you might have to push it and using the backside and using as leverage, you can kind of press in on it like this. And so it takes a little bit of practice to know where you might have to push in to get that kind of nice conal shape. And you kind of want to look at it as you're going. And I can see that this part is a little bit uh, straighter. So I need to actually make, bend that a little bit. And at this point, I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of just crimp down on that corner so that it looks a little uh, flatter here. And I'm, making, I'm going to make sure that the, the two edges meet here uh, very nicely. But as you can see, it opens up here. So now the trick is to just kind of roll it up as you're kind of uh, rotating around it to kind of close up that gap. And this is the part where you have to be really patient and careful. You don't want to put too much pressure because if you crimp it too much, it actually bends in too much and it's going to look really uh, ugly. So you want to try to work it in a circular motion going around and kind of pressing up and using the backside as leverage to kind of squeeze in. And this will take a little bit of practice, but once you do it a few times, you kind of know where to press in between to kind of get a nice cone shape here. And then I would normally, uh, if there's, in this case, there's this kind of cross on top of the cone, then I'm just gonna flatten it out by just crimping down on it like this. And so now you can see I have a nice cone shape here. And you can do the same for this end too, but I'm actually going to do that later. Because um, I'm actually going to do this here. And I'm not too worried about the middle parts bending to where it needs to be yet. I just, I'm just going to bend it a little bit so that I know that it's started to bend. Because once it started to bend a little bit, I'm able to just use my fingers and start pry applying a little bit of pressure at a time to start bending into the shape that I need. And so you can see that um, I'm starting to get my shape. Oops. And this one actually bent a little bit too much on the inside corner. So I'm actually going to bend that back out and then just bend in the last piece here like that. So now you get kind of that nice um, hexagon shape tower with a nice cone shape. And then after that, it's just finishing up with the uh, same tip from the top side. Um, in this case, though, we don't need to make it look round. So we're just more concerned about making sure that we line up our uh, plier to the right edge so that there's no gap on the top. And this is a little bit tricky but the whole idea is just to make sure that you're kind of crimping or bending by pressing down on the opposite side and knowing where to crimp down on. So for this cone, what I'm actually gonna do is start off on the edges here and then start turning it a little bit because the problem is if you go from the out, uh, inside out, a lot of times the edges aren't the part that get uh, bent. And so for that reason, right where the creases meet or the edges meet, it does not look that great. So I'm actually going to start from the outside and try to get as close to the middle as possible without going over and get a really nice kind of round the edge here. And then the rest I can just do slightly. I'm not too worried about uh, bending a lot in the middle parts. It's really the edges that are really important to get a nice clean cone shape. And as you're doing it, you're gonna see that um, it's gonna start widening up on the top here, which is always the problem with these cones. And so from here, when you get to a certain point, what I actually like doing is grabbing the edge and kind of pulling it down as you're bringing it in. And as you can see here, what, what that does is that as you're pulling it in, it kind of brings the, this part in closer. I'm actually pulling in and down 
to kind of make that gap closer and I'm gonna do that again here as I'm bringing this cone in. I'm not too worried about the shape because as soon as I'm done um, joining these two pieces together, I can go back in and work the inside and the, these outer edges. We're really concerned with this top edge here. And so what I'm gonna do here now is um, bend this tab in and I always work on the, the, the side with the tab hole in first so that it goes underneath like that and then I'm gonna go over with the tab this way and bringing it in so we're gonna close that tab and I'm actually gonna shape it before I close it because once it is in it's kind of hard to move it around so I kind of want to make sure that this is as close as possible this way and as you can see it's overlapping here which is fine because I'm actually going to be widening this up and we're going to start working on our shape here a little bit like that. I'm not too worried yet. Um, I'm actually using the rounded plier and kind of pressing up against the edges as I rotate it to kind of even out the curvatures a little bit more like that. And then just kind of take a look to see where it's uneven and just start working those areas. But before we continue, now you see that this is closed and overlapping, but this is wide and it's kind of a white gap. So what I'm actually gonna start doing now is pinching in here slightly. And then you're gonna see that this part is kind of straight out here and here. So what you're gonna do is actually grab, kind of going perpendicular to this open edge grabbing it to the back side here and kind of pinching it like that. Then you're going to do the same again for the other side as you're moving up. And you're going to do this a few times. And then as I'm doing it, I'm going to go towards the tip where the tip, the, the, the edge is narrower. And so that, uh, and kind of do that again and again a few times to get a nice, clean cone shape here. And then I'm just gonna go back in here and string up that edge. Now I can work on just making sure that this shape here on the bottom side of the cone is a little more uh, uniform and more circular. Right now this is bent out. So um, I'm actually gonna move it around to kind of get that nice curvature. And if you have any of these tools, you can actually get these tools through Animate Orange through their uh, website. And um, they actually, he uh, 3D prints these tools. These are not actually great for using it to create the cone because these edges are too soft. Um, so you don't want to actually do that because you will ruin the tip. I actually did ruin one of the tips, excuse me, one of the tips here. So it's not sharp anymore because I tried to wrap it around and move it around. So it's not great for creating the coat, but it's actually great for finishing the cone shape. So with this tool here now, I'm at, I can actually go in and kind of make sure that the edges here are all kind of the right angle that I need. So as you can see, it's starting to look a lot better and a lot more uniform. And I actually probably want to go with a slightly bigger shape here. I think that's too narrow. I think this is a perfect shape. And kind of just work it out until you have a nice perfect cone. And so now if you look at it, it's a very, very tight cone shape. Um, and this is really important for the Hogwarts model, but a lot of the different models that you've seen uh, through Metal Earth has sometimes one or two of these cone shapes. So this is a really great tip to make a really nice cone that looks really perfect. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, I know there's a lot uh, of information here, but I did want to cover two different topics. And so I ended up running a very long uh, video, but I didn't want to speed it up because I wanted to make sure that 